Hi, I'm here today with Matt Pruitt. Uh, Matt is the chair of Schiff Hardin's trade secret practice and is an experienced litigator that focuses on the area of trade secret theft. Matt, thanks for being on the show. And thanks for having me, Lee. We've had cases we've worked on before involving departed employees. Uh, could you tell everyone a little bit about your experience in this area dealing with trade secret theft? Sure. I mean, as a, as a trial lawyer, I've litigated uh, um, you know, both sides sometimes. Uh, defending the departing employee um, and or that employee's new employer. Mm -hmm. um, other times representing as the plaintiff the uh, company that the employee left. So can you, can you tell people generally what happens when you're on the, the side of the, that had the employee that left? What happens at ground zero? Well, ideally the company would already have in place a uh, structure of trade secret protection and, and uh, contractual and policy and technology protections against unfair competition by the departing employee. So that framework consists of um, typically um, a confidentiality agreement with the employee, mm -hmm. perhaps a, a set of restrictive covenants uh, like a non-compete agreement, um, and then um, hopefully handbook policies um, that govern the, the conduct of the employee. Um, those will be coupled with restrictions of course, that integrate with the company's relationships with its vendors and customers. Uh, basically, what the company ideally should be doing is sitting down with outside counsel, in-house counsel, IT, um, and thinking about all the places where the company has sensitive competitive information, trade secrets, or other confidential information that are at risk when um, an employee turns out to be disloyal. So, so when a client calls you and they suspect that someone took stuff, what, what do you advise them to do initially? Well, I mean, the first is to assess the situation, and um, that consists of identifying. I mean, we these days almost everything is electronic, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so, the first part of the assessment is to identify the types of electronic information that the departing employee would have access to either legitimately during the course of that employee's work or you know, by exceeding the, the policy limits or, or protections that the company had in place. You're, doing, you're identifying those areas for two reasons. One, preservation of evidence is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to know what you need to preserve if you don't know what the employee had access mm -hmm. to or potentially could have stolen. Um, and then the other reason is to assess the competitive risk and to begin to develop a, a plan for the investigation and perhaps litigation response if it turns out to be warranted. Oh. And, and so t typically, I know part of that initial response, uh, when I've worked with you in the past, you want a forensic image made of the employee's computer before anyone mucks it up. That is a, a, certainly an important starting point. The, you know, with the changes in technology, um, for better or for worse, the, uh, the places where the, da the relevant data reside and the places that need to be preserved are, are multiplying instead of getting narrower. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the hard drive of the laptop uh, remains a very important source because forensically it is oftentimes the area that is most susceptible to forensic analysis and investigation. Yeah. But there certainly are other places as well. You know, yeah. Cloud storage, the company's computer network, personal email account of the employee, personal phone, company issued phone, yeah. it goes on. I, I know when I first started in this area many years ago, the misappropriation was on a CD-ROM. And yeah. now it, you, you've got smartphones, you've got USB drives, but the cloud is a whole nother, a whole nother area of concern because companies can connect to Dropbox, Box.com, various other places, AWS, and move data to the cloud. So that, that becomes another point of concern and a need to be able to collect and preserve data from sources other than the computer. You're absolutely right, yeah. So can you tell us any war stories about what has, what's happened in the past when you've used forensics to pursue a case and, and what kind of result you've been able to get for your clients? Sure. I mean, the, the forensic um, examination is really a critical part of a trade secrets case, especially if you're on the plaintiff's side. Because in, when you're in court trying to enforce restrictions against a departing employee, mm -hmm. the, for better or for worse, 
the, the court is typically going to start that process with having with some sympathy to the departing employee. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are in America, and people yeah. are supposed to be rewarded for their ingenuity and hard work, and um, employee mobility uh, from one company to another is, uh, is you know, a basic value of our society. So showing the, the court that the employee cannot be trusted to do the right thing to be an honest and ethical employee at the new employer, at the mm -hmm. new at the competitor that she or he's gone to, mm -hmm. is really really important for building a, a non an effective non compete case or trade yeah. secrets theft case as a plaintiff. So, for instance, if your client had a policy of no USB drives and didn't use USB drives, but yet your forensic expert reported that a USB device was plugged into the computer the day before they filed their resignation, and that various files appear to have been copied to that drive, that would be something that would be compelling in support of an injunction, correct? It's, it's, it's certainly a brick in the, in the building that you're trying, or the story that you're trying to build for the court, absolutely. Yeah. So there's other pieces too. Do you, have you had situations where you've petitioned the court to allow discovery of that departed employee's home computer or, or new workplace computer? Um, yes. We've, Part of the forensic exercise is demonstrating the need for that discovery. And so what you'll want to start with as part of your initial investigation is to have your forensic expert look for evidence that will show that the employee has used her home computer, um, has used external devices, has copied to the cloud. And once you can show the migration of data mm -hmm. under suspicious circumstances off the, the realm of the company-owned hardware or accounts, then that's the central starting point for demonstrating the court that you need a more invasive approach into the, the personal devices and accounts of mm -hmm. the departing employee. Great. So let, let's say that uh, the plaintiff at attorney has established convincingly with their forensic expert that data was misappropriated and that the data clearly is confidential and trade secret type information. If you're advising the, the new company that hired the salesperson um, and, and you saw the report and you believe the report to be credible, how might you try to help that new employer end the litigation and get things to a peaceful place? I mean, they, hopefully the, the, the new employer has already laid the foundation for that scenario by instructing the employee before arriving that they should not copy or take things with them uh, from their previous employment, should not load things onto the company network that are belong to the previous employer, et cetera, mm -hmm. and, and to have done that in writing. If that's happened, that puts the new employer in a potentially awkward spot because you have an employee who not only has, has taken mm -hmm. his, former, his or her former employer's stuff, but then has also disregarded the instructions of the new employer as yeah. well. That's a situation where the new employer may be seriously considering terminating uh, its relationship yeah. with the new employee. Yeah. I, I've seen that happen. I've also seen situations where um, the, the employee who departs agrees to have forensic inspections on his computer and signs an agreement that you know pretty much guarantees that if he's caught doing something with us that he's going to have face massive legal costs and admit to wrongdoing. That's where that trust uh, factor or credibility factor is, becomes, it's one example of where it becomes really critical. Mm -hmm. The, um, not only is the court typically going to be inclined to um, the defendant departing employee's situation and want the, that employee to be able to have gainful employment, many courts are also going to want to give that employee a second chance. Yeah. And the second chance here is the chance to turn over the turn over the information and provide exactly the kind of affidavit or certification you're referring to. Great. Well, I appreciate you being on the show talking about this topic. It's one that impacts most businesses. So um, thanks again for being on the show.